camera? <laughs> So here we are at in the historic, the falls below Virgins, the Virgins Falls on the Otter Creek. Some say it's the birthplace of the U.S. Navy. During the Revolutionary War, when the British were coming out of Montreal and down Lake Champlain, Americans built wooden ships, small gunboats, and floated them down the Otter Creek and attached the British at the Battle of Valcour Island, and I know that that is a very controversial topic, who was, where the birthplace was, and what was the first battle, but from Vermont, that's how we see it, anyway. I want to do a series of short videos, very short, on spoon carving. I have a big rambling one in many parts, but for the first one, I thought I would talk about just scooping the bowl and I pulled my uh, my kit out of my backpack and sitting here alongside the river when we start to carve and I don't need to do it over that when we start to carve we carve across the grain and then we flip it around this is bass uh, I'm sorry butternut by the way flip it around and come back the other way and meet up in the middle and I'm taking longer and longer scoops further and further out from the edge and hopefully these videos will be of interest to some of uh, my customers and answer a few questions about how to do this I am very concerned about showing people the right way to do it for fear that they won't make the attempt, and my way is not necessarily the right way. And as a matter of fact, I am ambidextrous. I spent most of my life doing things left-handed. I can generally do it either way, and once I learn a task, I learn it that way. So this is a right-handed spoon knife, hook knife, and I'm holding it in my left hand, I'm holding the spoon in my right, and I'm using my thumb for pressure and it keeps it accurate. My fingers are down below the edge. We don't want anything that would cut in, to be in front. And we'll just work it back and forth. So working uh, back and forth across grain, we're doing it in a much more controlled way and it's unlikely that there'll be a giant tear out. When we start to go with the grain, it'll be much easier, but we'll have a bit less control. We'll be following the grain of the wood. And so, this is the beginning of going with the grain of the wood and enlarging our bowl. And that's pretty much what we'll do for now. Now that I've got some in the middle, take it out here.
actually uh, with these videos I'm hoping anyone who purchases things from me I certainly do respond to your emails one common question is the wood is so hard uh, I can't do it and it is it can be difficult butternut is probably the easiest wood to carve but if you start to run into problems I could just go and dunk it in the Otter Creek. I brought a little spray bottle knowing we were going to do this. And moistening the wood, we don't want to soak the wood, but moistening the wood will uh, soften the wood and make it easier to carve until we get down to, and you'll see, we'll hit a dry spot. So if you're into, I also sell walnut and cherry and it's much, it's a much denser wood and more difficult to carve. And sometimes what you wanna do is keep it moist. I wrap it in wet paper towels, sometimes overnight in a Ziploc bag. So I get in a little ways and uh, I soak the water in a little ways and then I'll carve that. And once I get down, I will, down to dry wood like I'm doing here, I'll come back and wet it again and wait and let it set and get moistened and do some more. How do you take things in? And you can use a caliper to see how thick you want your bowl to be, but just a normal pincer grip will tell you when you're getting close. I'm, uh, I'm feeling like the depth of this bowl when I take some off the back is gonna be pretty close to all right. I'm gonna need to remove some more out here to get to the edge. And you also have to have a plan in your head. What I was saying before about being ambidextrous and living my life left-handed and working with right-handed tools I think what you need to do, and we can watch videos specific to Welsh carving, Swedish carving tradition, all kinds of traditions, but I got my hands on the tools and I sat and I played with it and that's how I figured out how to do it. And your way might be different. And my fear is that by telling you the right way that you'll be afraid you and not make the attempt because you're not doing it in proper Swedish, Welsh, or whatever expert taught you how to do it. My first spoon, my I got my hands on a spoon knife and my neighbor gave me a piece of cherry flooring. And that was my very first spoon, which I still have. Uh, and I just played with it until I got a something that looks kind of like a spoon out of it. I don't know if at that point I even had a bandsaw or cut out my own blanks or cut out a blank. I may have just used a knife to carve it out of a rectangular piece of cherry, which can be quite a challenge.
and you will notice that I'm keeping body parts well away from the traveling knife.